Savior, I come. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember, redemption's hell where your blood was spilled for my ransom. Everything I once held dear, I count it all as lost. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I Crimson stain, he 
spots and melt the heart of stone cause Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Palm Sunday. Let's stretch our hand out and bring praise and glory to our Father. Our Father, our Almighty God, we worship you. In honest and sincere heart, we offer our praises and glory to your name. Please come with us and let your heart be pleased. Although we messed up quite badly, but we can still see the magnificence in the weather changes, season adjustments, and everything and everyone impacted by it. Oh Lord, guide us to do better, become for, for, the, and for the creations that you had trusted to us. Let's have the smarts to know what we should do and the humility to walk in steps of your guidance. We didn't look back to see what we accomplished. We just want to look ahead and seeing what you intended to complete in us, through us, and to the rest of the world. So often, we walk in cloudy days. Everything are confusing. In the mist, we cannot see your kind, hand, kind and loving hand holding ours. All the wars, shooting, killing, and injustice happening all around us give us jitters. We scared, and we run off in every direction, but ignoring the signal you shine in front of us. Tell us not to be afraid, but keep doing what we should do. Please pick us up when we are weak. Please stay with us when we are lonely. Please accept our worship because you are God. Thank you, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us continue to worship with scripture, the word of God. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. 
Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the colt of a donkey. I will take away the chariot from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoner of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. This is the word of God. Let us continue to worship with responsive reading of the scripture. Psalm 118, 19 to 29. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With buffs in hands, join in the, fest, in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. Let us read this verse 19 together on the count of one, two, three. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Morning. So today I'll be reading from Philippians 2, verses 5 to 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God. So I'll also be reading from John 12, verses 12 to 15, and verses 20 to 43. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. 
Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it. Well, anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now, my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, Glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? And Jesus told them, you are going to have the light just a, a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. Even after Jesus had performed so many signs in her presence, they still would not believe in him. This was, to, this was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet. Lord, who has believed their message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this reason, they could not believe. Because as Isaiah says elsewhere, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so they can neither see with their eyes, nor understand with their hearts, nor turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. Yet at the same time, many, even among the leaders, believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith, for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved human praise, more than praise from God. This is the word of God. The Lord be with you. Thanks be to God for letting me bring his message to you today. After five weeks of Lent, we are entering into the climax of our Christian faith, Christian story. It is the Holy Week or Passion Week. It's the week that forever changed human history. The week begins with Jesus' triumphal entry into the holy city, Jerusalem. On that day, 
Jesus fulfilled what the prophet Zachariah prophesied in the passage we just heard earlier by Mrs. Wong. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 1 to 9. And what chapter 9, verse 9 says? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. You may be wondering, only the daughters? Well, that doesn't mean women only. It is Hebrew poetry language, referring to a royal city, a nation, or peop a people. We may read it as, rejoice greatly, O citizen of Zion. Shout aloud, O people of Jerusalem. It is a call to everyone to rejoice and shout. Rejoice and shout for what? Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey. On a colt, the fowl of a donkey. I believe most of us know the significance of Jesus riding on a donkey, entering Jerusalem. This was the first time Jesus made a public declaration to the Romans and to the Jews that he is king. The king of the Jews, the king of the world, the king of the whole creation. Jesus is the king of peace, riding on a donkey, not a conquering warrior riding a horse. In the passage before verse 9, nine one, verse 1 to 8, Zechariah's prophecy was fulfilled by Alexander the Great, who came and conquered north and east of Palestine in 332 BC. And Alexander the Great rode on a mighty steed and led his army, taking down one city after another in stark contrast. Chapter 9, verse 9, Zechariah prophesies a king rode on a lowly donkey. And Jesus fulfilled the prophecy and was coming as a king with humility. Unlike the other kings, the sole purpose of Jesus' coming was to give his life as a ransom for many. Matthew 20, 28. And we heard this message last week by Pastor James. And there's another very significant fulfillment Jesus fulfilled on the day of Palm Sunday that was not very well known to many. And today, I want you to know it, and to know it well, with your heart and with your mind. It is unfortunate to hear when Christians, brother and sister, come to worship on Palm Sunday, and they ask, what does the palm leaves for? Some did not ask openly, but with their eyes and puzzled face, I could tell they had no idea what does the palm leaves for. True, maybe no one ever explained it what the palm leaves are for and what are we expect to do with this. But today, let us learn that the palm leaves are for celebrating Palm Sunday. Is that enough for us to know that the palm leaves are for Palm Sunday? Of course not. Our God is an awesome God. He is not an idea, not an ideology, not a feeling, not even a song, or even an object like the palm leaves. All these things can help us know God, for he is the creator of all things. He is the God of history. History is his story. With the palm leaves in our hands, we are called, we are commanded to join people of our time, people of Jesus' time, people in prophets, prophets, of prophet Zachariah's time, 
and even further back, people in Adam's and Eve's, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's time. Now jump to the future, people in the future. To rejoice, to shout aloud, not just shout, but shout aloud, just like Mrs. Wong. And to see that the king is coming. And you may ask what we are supposed to shout. What are we supposed to shout? Yes, let's do it together. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. I don't hear you at all. This is called shout. You know, old Jerusalem heard this when the when the disciples and his people shouted. All eyes was on Jesus at that time. Let's do it. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. You have to be louder than me with the microphone. One more time. Let's get up and do it. No, let's get up. Let's get up. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Who, besides shouting Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. What else do we also need to know about Palm Sunday? What also needed to know that God, we needed to know God has a predestined time for Jesus to come and fulfill the prophecy regarding himself. On the day when Jesus was riding on the donkey entering Jerusalem, Jesus fulfilled not only the prophecy prophesied by Zechariah, Jesus also fulfilled the prophecy that he was the Passover lamb chosen to be ready, to be slaughtered for the Passover feast. How was Jesus the Passover lamb? Let us go back to the first Passover. We need to go way back to the book of Exodus in order to save the Israelites from the hands of Pharaoh of Egypt. God sent an God sent 10 plagues to Pharaoh and Egypt. One plague after another, Pharaoh would not change his mind. His heart was hardened, and he refused to let the Israelites leave Egypt. It was after the nine plagues before God sent the last plague, the most horrific plague. God instructed Moses and Aaron to establish a tradition that would help them to remember God from generation to generation of God, how God saved them from slavery in Egypt. And this is the tradition of Passover. In Exodus 12, verse 1 to 13, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month, the month of Nisan, although this Nisan did not appear, the word Nisan, the, the name of the month, did not appear until Esther 2, 7. Shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may, you may, take, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. 
Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Picture this. For centuries, thousands of years, on the 10th day of the month of Nisan, every Jewish family had to choose a one-year-old lamb or goat from his field, field or from the market. And this day is called Lamb Selection Day or Day of Lambs. The lamb must be perfect in health and in look. That is called without blemish into his house. The lamb, the Passover lamb, was kept in the house for the next couple of days, lived and being examined by the whole entire family, then slaughtered on the twilight of the 14th day. Just as those who were preparing at home, there were also those who traveled to the temple in Jerusalem to commemorate the Passover. Men were required to go to Jerusalem to offer their sacrifices. Deuteronomy 16, 16 to 17. Therefore, thousands of pilgrims, along with thousands of bleating, scampering lambs, flocked into Jerusalem. Historian Josephus estimates that as many as 265,000 lambs could be sacrificed in the temple for Passover. Fast forward to Jesus' time. God's timing is always perfect. Palm Sunday coincides with Jewish Days of Lamb or Lamb Selection Day. How do we know? John 12, 1, tells us that six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus has raised from the dead. Six days before the Passover, Jesus stayed in the house of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Verse 12, the next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. This next day, traditionally recognized as the Day of Lambs, Lamb Selection Day. Jesus, the Passover lamb, came to Jerusalem, presenting himself as the chosen Passover lamb. Remember in John 1, 29, when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. On this appointed day of the 10th day of Nisan, Jesus rode on the donkey as king of Israel and as the perfect lamb without blemish, the Passover lamb ready to be sacrificed for all Israel and the world. On the 14th day, precisely, Jesus was crucified on the cross, shed his blood to pay for our sins. The chosen lamb was to live inside of the house with the family for how many days? 
four days. The lamb would be examined through and through for its perfection. Children in the house would have a chance to pet the lamb, play with the lamb, watch the cute lamb run, eat, listen to him bark, and perhaps hug the lamb to sleep. It was not hard to fall in love with this adorable lamb. However, soon, the lamb would be killed as a sacrifice for the sins of everyone in the house. There's another notable detail in God's instruction of the Passover lamb. God says, the lamb was to be kept in the house for a couple of days, from the 10th to the 14th day of the month. The lamb was for the whole family. But if it's too big for the one family, the family should share it with another family. Here, God reminds his people. His salvation is intended for just us, just you, just me. It's for the entire household. And even for our neighbors. Throughout history, God has a way of teaching his people to know how costly sin is. No number of sacrifices are enough to atone for sin. Only the blood of Jesus. The blood of this perfect Passover lamb can wash away all the sin of the world. This was how Jesus is the perfect Passover lamb. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed it from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your forefathers. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of time. First Peter, First Peter 1, 18 to 20. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I thank God for Jesus, who as the ultimate Passover lamb sacrificed himself to the, on the cross for my salvation, your salvation, and salvation of all mankind and even the whole creation. God, with a deep love for us, has accomplished his plan to sacrifice Jesus as Passover lamb, to shed his blood to die in our place. Jesus has done his part to fulfill God's requirement of redemption. Only he can save us from the bondage of sin and the judgment of sin. Have you accepted Jesus as your Passover lamb? Let his blood cover you so that God's judgment would pass over you. Or the least you can do is to take Jesus home. Take it to heart. Take it to think about him. Thoroughly examine him. Ask him questions. Let himself reveal himself to you. And you will find out if he is truly the Passover lamb or not. What else did God want us to do? Just to wave this at church? And what is our part in responding to his love for us? It's too bad that we don't do sacrifice lamb anymore. But we don't understand it. The blood the sound of killing. 
we don't understand it. We don't understand thoroughly. The word of God shows us three ways to respond to God's love. First, Paul in 1 Corinthians 5, 7 and 8 urges us as individuals and as a church to get rid of our old sins. Verse 7, get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and the truth. Yeast and, un- yeast and leavened bread represent sin. No wonder the day after Passover is the feast of unleavened bread. Every Jewish family would throw away, clean up all the yeast and leavened food in the house and eat only unleavened bread for seven days. This is a very strict law, and Jewish people know the seriousness of the consequences of not keeping it. This law shows the severity of allowing even a slight sin, like a yeast, in our body and in the body of Christ. Sin, like malice and wickedness, would cause serious damage of the health of the church. Therefore, the church must get rid of the old yeast, the malice and wickedness, and replace them with sincerity and truth. Malice is a big word. What is malice? I looked it up. Malice is a desire to cause pain, injury, or distress to another. An attack motivated by pure malice. Second interpretation. Malice is an intent to commit an unlawful act or cause harm without legal justification or excuse ruined someone's reputation and did it with malice. We must get rid of these old sins. You know your old sins. We all know our own old sins. Get rid of them. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Second, in the passage of John 12, 20 to 40, we heard today, in verses 24 to 26, Jesus urges us saying, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Jesus called us to live a life of dying to self. Learn from Jesus. He gave up his life, the life of an earthly exalted king, ready to take down the Romans and the Sanhedrin council. But instead, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 8 to 11. Joseph had read it for us. Are there anything we lose? We will lose by following Jesus and serving him. The answer is a resounding no. The blessings and honor of serving him are beyond measure. Third, in, G, in John 12, 35 to 36, Jesus says, the light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. Why you have the light? Believe in the light that you may become sons of light. Last Thursday, our English prayer meeting joined the Heart of Myanmar prayer meeting. We heard testimonies of young people from Myanmar, 19, 20 years old young people, in Myanmar today, these days, are living in fear of being con con conscripted into the military regime army. They saw no possibilities of finishing their university studies. Their dreams were shattered by the political situation of their country. Many of them were depressed, very depressed. Lots of anxiety. Some of them ran away from home, ran to the mountains to hide or to join the people's army. Brothers and sisters, the situations all over the world are getting worse and worse and worse. Today you are here and you heard the good news of Jesus. Jesus, he is the Passover lamb for you. He is the light you need. Once you walk out of here, you do not know for how long you will still have this freedom of approaching the light. You don't know when darkness will overtake you. I hope you hear what Jesus says. Why you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. I pray that no one here today walk out of here rejecting this offer of believing this light, that you may become sons of light. It would be very sad if you are one of those who have seen Jesus did many signs and wonders, but still did not believe in him. What are the reasons you could not believe in Jesus? Is it because you would rather choose to keep a blind eye, blind eye to the truth, and your heart is hardened, and even though you know God loves you? Or you do believe, but you do not want anyone to know that you believe. So you won't confess, so you won't confess publicly that you believe. Just like John 12, 42 to 43 describes. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed it in him, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it. So that they would be, so they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. Can it be true? that the glory of man is greater than the glory of God, that you would rather forfeit the glory of God. I pray that you would yield to the Spirit of God. Let him prompt you to confess, Jesus is your Passover lamb. So that we can all re rejoice and joyfully say that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, 
We bless you from the house of the Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you. Let us all rise to sing, Oh, praise the name.
as we uh, hold this uh, palm branch in our hand, we I like to read from Revelation chapter seven. We look ahead. We join not only with our God's people in Zechariah today, and we look for the look forward to that day. Revelation chapter seven. After this, I looked, and there before me, a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were waving. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they. Cried out in a loud voice, "Salvation belong to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb." Amen. We look for that day. We long for that day. Lord, come, Maranatha. May God's peace be with you all. Please be seated. The Lamb of God is ready. We just need to come to Him and repent and follow His will. Praise the Lord. Uh, the announcement is on the bulletin, and I'm not going to read them all out to you. But I like to point you out to three uh, items. The number three. Remember next week. Please join us. Uh, come back here as much as you can. And make sure that we prepare our hearts to give glory to our Lord. Uh, on Friday, which is March the 29th, tradition tells us that this day that Jesus get onto the cross and sacrifice his life for us. So we come back and give him glory at 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So it should be a non-work day, so please come. Join us on the worship on 29th. And then on Sunday, as normal, we will worship him uh, with the 9.30, we have a baptismal class, uh, a baptism uh, ceremony. So please join us and uh, witness the person decided uh, to, be sec uh, to be baptized in front of people and the Lord. And then at 11 o'clock, and again, we give glory to the Lord with the baptism and our uh, Sunday, a Resurrection Sunday. On Sunday, uh, further on, uh, the, after the worship, uh, we have a potluck lunch. Uh, there is a plan for you to uh, participate, uh, bring the kind of food uh, according to your last name, so you can that way, we have a better sharing of what kind of food that might end up on the table. Uh, but keep you come and enjoy with us uh, the celebration of the Resurrection Sunday. And today, at 1.30, we will have the membership meeting. Please join us uh, on Zoom uh, with the detail uh, attached. Okay? God bless, and I will see you next Friday and Sunday.